In this video, we have another tactics video, another contact one. This is react to indirect fire. Indirect fires are your non-aimed fires, predominantly artillery, mortars, or rockets. But it can also be machine gun fire. It was a tactic that was developed and employed during World War I where you would have machine guns farther back, they would angle their fire, they knew the general bullet drop, and they could literally lob rounds over the top of their own troops and land them right into enemy areas. That's also indirect fire using machine guns. Now in this one though, we're gonna be reacting to indirect fire of an, the explosive type. So we're going to be looking at mortars or artillery. Now the difference between the two of them. Artillery you will hear a whine coming in typically. Where mortars aren't traveling as fast so they're not going to be making that whine as they're coming in through the air. They're kind of getting lobbed in there. So basically they'll just start to exploding around you. And if no one is nearby them as they're exploding and it's happening, you know, multiple times, it's probably going to be mortars. You could potentially hear the thump from the uh, mortar being fired before it lands also. That would also be an indicator of mortar fire. If you hear uh, kind of a uh, tink, 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 before the explosions happen, that's going to be an automatic grenade launcher. Which that typically is going to be more of a, a direct fire type weapon because you're going to have to be within range of the weapon system. So in theory, you're going to be close enough for the uh, gunner on the AGL to see you and adjust his rounds. So that technically falls in the direct fire category. Now, as soon as that uh, first one or two explosions go off or you hear the whine of the artillery coming in, you yell out get down or yell out incoming and everyone gets down on the ground. They get as low as possible. You know, they hug the earth, try to crawl into it basically until the explosions happen. Once that batch of explosions is done the old uh, battle drill was you then got out of that area but it may be that you're going to get up and you're going to start running before the barrage is done so what we have here we have the leading fire team of a squad we had the team leader in front, two of his troops going down this side, two of his troops going down this side. They're moving in a fire team wedge. The other fire team in the squad is back here yet. The squad leader is up here in roughly the center of this fire team wedge so that he can see what's going on. We're traveling through woods, but the woods are fairly spread out in that stuff. It's not uh, close terrain. That's why they're traveling in a wedge and not in a ranger file. So the people are spread out. How far are they going to be spread out? It, they're going to be spread out where they are greater than grenade range from the person that's next up in line. But they're still going to want to be close enough that they can still have good eyes on to the person to their left, to their right to the person in front of them, to the person behind them. I personally, when I've traveled in Fair Team Wedge, I've traveled as close as five meters, depending on the terrain and how much vegetation there was when we were moving through woods. Or if we were traveling on uh, grasslands, we would go maybe 25 meters between people. When I was in the desert, and we traveled as a fire team wedge. You don't have a lot of vegetation out there. 
we traveled at least 50 meters between people. So you were just close enough that you could see hand and arm signals and that was about it. You couldn't tell much anything else. So if you were the person way back here and you were told to get up online, you know, you had potentially a hundred plus meters you had to run forward to get up online in that situation. But we're going through the woods here. We start hearing the wine coming in. Now it's possible that's artillery going past. We don't know though. You always react to that uh, the rounds are aimed at you until you hear otherwise. So, we hear the wine coming in. Everyone yells out, incoming, and they get down on the ground. Now, if the rounds keep going, there's no explosions. The squad leader then will tell everyone, get back up, continue moving forward. If we get explosions like are happening here, everyone's down on the ground. The squad leader and the team leader are both assessing the situation. They're trying to get a quick look up. They're just raising their eyes and they're looking how far ahead are the rounds impacting? How far to the side? Where are they impacting? Is anyone getting hit? If it looks like there's a, a quick lull, the squad leader, first off, will yell out if he's uh, not injured. He'll yell out a distance and a direction. So he will yell out, say, 500 meters straight ahead. As soon as you hear that, everybody copies the command, yells it out also, and you get up and you start running. Now, as you're running, if you see someone is hit, you try to help them out. So we got, this one's going to be going 500 meters straight. He's going to be going generally 500 meters straight, so is he. This one was close enough to an explosion. He may have caught shrapnel. He may be injured. So this guy, instead of going straight ahead, he's going to go up this way first, pick him up, and then either toss him over his shoulder, fireman carry, or drag him behind him, and he's going to go ahead also. Squad leader is also going to be going ahead. They move forward that distance, in the direction that was yelled out. They then pull a, th a quick 360 and they do an ACE report. Some of you may uh, be aware of this. Those of you that served after 9-11 may know this as an ACE W. A-C-E. Ammunition, casualties, equipment. And if we have the W, that's water. Before 9-11, we did primarily, we did only ACE reports. But after we were in the desert, we had to deal with the hot conditions. We added the W for water. But we get out of the kill zone. So we get up here, we're outside the kill zone. Our casualty will be brought into the center of the perimeter that we're our hasty perimeter that we set up and first aid will, will be applied. The squad leader, if he's the highest ranking who's there and alive, will call out ACE report. If the squad leader isn't there, he may be back here. He may have got blown to pieces. Well then, the highest ranking person, if it's a team leader, he yells out it for the ACE report. Everyone goes through. They check their ammo pouches. Check their bandoliers, make sure they didn't drop any ammo behind. If they did, you know, they they let someone know that, hey, I dropped uh, three magazines. You know, the pouch got blown off. 
hey, I dropped a, or a, a bandolier fell off, or a, a, a saw drum fell out of the bandolier or fell off the weapon as I was running through the woods, whatever it is. Casualties, well, we got one for sure here, so we know we got the one casualty. And then it's going to be, well, what's his condition? How bad is he hit? Can, is he ambulatory? Can he keep moving on his own? Do we need to get the stretcher out? Do we need to make a stretcher? Do we need to get him to an evac point? Equipment. You're checking all your stuff. You're making sure you still got all your pouches on your gear. You're making sure you still got all your knives inside their scabbards. You got your canteens inside, your pou inside their pouches. You still got your rucksack. You still got your uh, assault pack. Everything is still there. Nothing's damaged. If it is damaged, you um, mention that, okay? The ACE report is collected by the team leader. The team leader gives it to the squad leader. And if you're in the desert, obviously you're also checking your water. You're checking those canteens, those camelbacks, to see if any of them burst or if they got holes from shrapnel. And then that gets reported in also. Now you're probably asking what about the team that was back here? Well, they would see the explosions. They hear the orders going out. Hopefully, they take off in the same direction. Now, if the artillery or the mort de barrage is still going on, it's so loud you're not going to hear anything, you're not going to hear what's being said. That squad leader may decide that they need to get out of their, you know, lickety spit there. You see him get up, he starts waving for everyone to start falling behind him you know, the follow me signal. And he makes sure everyone can see him as he's running forward and you start trailing right behind him. So when you get down on the ground, don't just bury your eyes, okay? Try to keep them up a little bit that you can see what's going on. If that, that squad leader's still running forward, you're trailing right behind him. Where he stops, you stop also, and then you start setting up your perimeter. And then you go through, do your ACE report. Now, if someone gets left behind in there, they were so injured they could not, and uh, no one was able to pick them up, that squad leader is going to have to make that call. He's going to ask uh, where the person is. You know, hey, where's Tom? Where's Dick? Where's Harry? They didn't make it up here. Everyone asks around, well, what happened to them? Did anyone see them get hit? Anyone see where they were? Well, I seen uh, Harry got blown to pieces. One of the rounds landed right next to him. There's nothing left of him. That accounts for him, doesn't it? Well, and you got two others that are missing. That squad leader is going to have to make a call. Does he send a couple people back to look for them? Or does he leave them behind? It's a tough decision. A very tough one. The gut reaction is you go back and get your people. But if this area is getting pounded to pieces, you know, you just barely made it out alive. The chance of them still being alive back there as the barrage is still going in is pretty damn low. So then the call's going to be, well, do you sit out here and you wait for the barrage to end and then go in and check? Or is the mission so much of a priority that it must be completed first? And then you might come back and look for your missing troops. Now, you're probably saying that's BS. You always go back for your people. You never leave anyone behind. You could be on a mission that if it is not completed by a certain time, it could mean the deaths of hundreds, possibly thousands of your comrades, of your fellow troops. In that case, the lives of those hundreds and those thousands takes priority over the two that are left behind in here in the area that's getting pounded. 
but if you're just on a patrol and that stuff you don't really have a time limit or you should you may have enough time to still reach your uh, objective your uh, rally point or wherever you're going to you could decide to sit out and wait for the barrage to lift and then go in and check that's up to the person out here the senior most person who's now in charge don't let your emotions uh, get a hold of you I hate saying it but you know the greater good takes uh, priority over the individual in this situation Now, uh, if this was a mortar barrage, mortars are very limited range. Uh, you may make the call to take care of the mortar team. If you can hear the general direction that it might be at, you listen for that thump, thump, thump as the uh, mortars are getting uh, launched out of the tube. Well, if you hear that you're out here, you're outside the uh, impact area, you have people missing in here. You hear where the thump is coming from. You may leave your one casualty here with a combat lifesaver to watch over them. If you have a medic, you bring the medic with you. You then take the rest of your squad in the direction that you hear the enemy fire coming from. So if you hear the thump from coming up over here, there's probably a mortar over here. They're launching the rounds in. That squad leader or that team leader, whoever is in charge, then takes everyone up there and you locate that mortar and you take it out. You take out that team, you take out the weapon system. There's no more fires going in. Well, if you're a gorilla, you'll uh, collect up the uh, mortars, you'll collect up the tube. Whatever you can't carry with you, you destroy. You then go back in and look for your missing people. If it's artillery, you hear that uh, freight train going overhead and the impacts are going off. Artillery can be many, many, many kilometers away coming in. And if it's some type of rocket, it's probably going to be even farther. Now if it's, if it's artillery, you might be talking about the tubes are 5 kilometers away, potentially 10 to 15. It depends on the system. If you're talking it's rockets, you know, you might be 25 kilometers or more away from the, the launchers. It just depends on the size of the tubes. So there's not much you can do about those, but mortars are going to be typically close, closer in. I th let's see what is the typical range on a mortar it depends on the size I wanna say within three to five thousand meters depending on the size of the mortar if it's a 60 millimeter it's gonna be under a thousand meters or just a little over a thousand meters maximum I don't have my book to pull out to find out ranges for different types of mortars. That, uh, that stuff is listed in uh, FM 5-34 engineer field data and I do not have a copy of it out here. But uh, your basic react index fire drill, the rounds start going off, everyone yells incoming, they get down. The person in charge assesses the situation Technically, all the NCOs would assess the situation. And then one of them will yell out a direction and a distance. And then everybody gets up. They yell out that same direction and the distance as they're running according to that direction and distance. They could be told left flank 500 meters or left flank 100 meters. They could be told, you know, go to the rear 1,000 meters. It's possible they're on the very edge 
of the barrage. The bulk of the barrage is over here. If they're right on the edge of it, they were walking right into it. Well, instead of running through the barrage, the uh, squad leader or the team leader will tell them, you know, run back. So, that's the basics on that react to contact drill. Now, for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay ons.